time I've seen a lot of differences in the way we go and do our things. I served for 13 years in Germany doing what we did was called the Cold War when we were there to keep away the Russians from crossing over the border into, into Europe. During that time I served in Belize which was really hard work as you can imagine, six months in the summer, in the sun in Central America which was just awful as you can oh, probably believe. Wow. Belize, yeah. uh, I managed to, I have to do exchange when I went to Northern Ireland and for the first time I was exposed to war, I suppose, mm -hmm. although a slightly different type of war because it's an enemy we never really knew. Uh, and t generally, the enemy there would target people instead of face to face, like conventional war, through things like bombing or attacks or ambushes. So, but my time in Ireland was not the east of times. I lost two friends who were blown up uh, during car bombing. And in fact, I lost a friend in Germany who was blown up in Germany as well. In the, 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 the IRA. By the IRA, that's quite yes, right, yeah. Yes. Um, although they would say they're not terrorists, you know, they are freedom fighters, and everybody's got their own opinion on, on what Gary they were. Adams mm -hmm. is even now. Gary Adams is now an MP, and you know, he's quite right. We can now hear him speak. A long time ago, people might remember we never heard Gerry Adams speak. He was always mouthed by, a different, uh, uh, by an actor who gave his voice. Things changed then in 1991. Uh, on my birthday, 6 September, just in case anyone send me a card next time. <laughs> I was asked to go into work. I was living in sure. Germany at the time, and we were going to start work for the then the Gulf War that was coming up. Me, I'm a communicator. My badge here says Royal Signals. So for all of my life, I've been communicated. From Morse, when I first started, through to now, to computer networks and satellite systems. So the whole gamut of communications. So my job was to communicate. Um, I went into work in the dark, and I was going home at night in the dark. And that took about a month and a half before we managed to get everything ready to, do, to deploy to the Gulf. I got out to the Gulf just before Christmas. So my Christmas was spent at the end of November with my family. Um, we had a Christmas party. We owned Christmas presents for my kids. And we had a full Christmas albeit in November, <laughs> for a big reason. We didn't know if we were going to come back. And at the end of the day, it's not what I do, because it's my job, it's those who are left behind who suffer most. I go and do what I do because I enjoy doing it, but I couldn't do it without the support of family and friends. And a lot of people forget the families and friends who are left behind. They only see the soldier in the front. So off I moved, moved out to... Um, uh, Saudi Arabia, and then started my work. The work there was quite happy, uh, and like most things, it was quite dull. And to be brutally honest, war is actually quite boring. 90% um, of the time, you're doing very little. You're either tidying your equipment up, or eating, or sleeping. 10% of the time, it's damn scary. There is no doubt about it. Wow. Everything's fine until somebody starts to shoot at you or near you then that gets a bit worrying. Um, however, it's a job, and I've said it's a job before, and we do the job willingly. Uh, we volunteer, we are in a volunteer army, we volunteer to take this job. And I know very few people who said they wouldn't go. In fact, most people want to go to war, just to test themselves, to see whether or not they can take what happens in war. What Some about of the th after 2001? What, sorry? What about after 2001? He gave me a proper rifle instead, uh, and gave me my ammunition and my food, and then I set to work. I worked shifts in the back of a vehicle, providing communications, because without communications, nobody can do anything. Everything was going swimmingly until it was time to move north towards Iraq, and then it started to get a bit hairy. Then it was time to start wearing the helmet, instead of just carrying with me. Then it was time to wear a flat jacket instead of just sitting on it. Then it was time to think about writing home again. 
because you're never really sure what's going to happen. As we crossed over into Iraq uh, and Soviet-built tanks were coming towards us, then things really do get a little bit more hairy. Sometimes it's easy to forget. Um, being under fire is not the most pleasant experience. However, most people keep their heads down. Nobody wants to get shot. One of the biggest things you ever find when you're out there, wherever it might be, is what you see. And some things ought to be left unseen. Um, weapon systems nowadays are very clinical. A bullet can kill somebody two miles away. A bomb can kill 100 people from 1,000 miles away. A missile system can take out a whole regiment within minutes. Um, and there's not a lot left when that happens. What you need to be able to do, and a lot of people can and can't do this, is to put it away. Whatever you see, whatever you do, sits at the back of the mind. If you start going back at it, you're liable to find yourself in some mental problems. So we tend to push away. Um, the military is renowned, um, well, a lot of people are renowned, for having black humor. We will make a joke about something because it's a way to get through. Um, sometimes that will hide a mental issue or a mental problem. But again, we're happy to talk. Because like everything, if you talk the problem out, you can generally ease the problem out as well. So, I noticed on the wall here, you had the Women's Auxiliary, Army Auxiliary Corps. This uniform is from this period we're talking about now. This is the First World War uniform belonging to somebody we called Isabella. She was one of the first women in the Army to do a communications job. And funny enough, although this is nearly 100 years old, if you look on her arm, she carries a blue and white badge. And strangely enough, so do I. Because 100 years later, we still carry that same badge, which meant that this woman was working in communications. She also carries on a breast here, two medals. These are the First World War medals that you may have seen. Grandparents have probably got these, or somebody may have them copies of them or the originals themselves. And these were Isabella's medals that she wore during that period. So things don't change really. Although war is quite difficult, females were also coming into it as well a lot more. Into the Second World War, this was the type of uniform being worn. A lot itchier. When you get a chance to have a little chat and have a look around, then please feel free to come and have a look at the, the, uh, what the uniform is. A lot more difficult to wear, a lot more uncomfortable, rather than today's uniform. Uh, and again, please feel free to when we get the chance to come and have a chat about it. On the side, the guy here wore who he was with, the Royal Signals, and the Iron Fist here was 20 Armoured Brigade. And this guy was a corporal, what we call a corporal, two stripes on his arm, was a corporal. Yes. Yeah. Uh, interesting enough, this guy was fighting, and he had a collar and tie on. He was very smart, he was a very smart soldier going to war. We don't wear collars and ties anymore, thankfully. And we're a lot lighter uniform and a lot easier to look after.